Hi everyone! In this video we are going to uh, take a look at multiplying polynomials. If you have not already, uh, please take a moment and go back and watch the video about the rules for exponents, unless you are familiar with the rules for exponents. Uh, we are going to be using, in particular, the uh, product rule for exponents in this video. So we're going to break down the multiplication uh, step by step. So we're going to start with multiplying just two monomials together. And if you can multiply two monomials together, you can multiply any polynomial. Uh, so when we're multiplying monomials, we are going to multiply the coefficients and then use the rules for exponents to multiply the variables. And that's only if we have the same variable in each of the monomials. Remember a monomial itself is a product, so a product of a number and one or more variables. Um, so when we are multiplying, we're just rearranging that product and uh, multiplying the uh, factors that are the same together. So multiplying the real numbers, multiplying any of the uh, one type of variable, that, the same letter, and then another of the same letter. When we multiply, we are using the product rule for exponents, and if you recall, the product rule tells us that if you have the same base, you are adding the exponents together. So let's take a look at the two examples that you see on the screen. On the first example, we have the monomial 4xy to the third, and that is being multiplied by negative 2x squared y to the fourth. So we're going to multiply each of the different factors of the uh, monomials by each other. Starting with the coefficients, 4 times negative 2, which gives us negative 8. And then since we have x's in both monomials, we can multiply those. x times x squared is x to the third. And again, we got that from uh, the product rule, so this is an x to the first. And we're adding the exponents together to get x to the third. Uh, for the y's, y to the third times y to the fourth is y to the seventh. So we have a product of negative 8, x to the third, y to the seventh. In the second example, we have the monomial 1 half a to the fifth times 6ab squared. So notice that the uh, variables that you see in each of these monomials are not exactly the same. So in the first uh, monomial, we have an a raised to the fifth power. In the second, we have an a and a b raised to the second power. So even though we don't have the same exact variables, we can still multiply these together. Uh, so multiplying the coefficients, 1 half times 6 is 3. Multiplying the a's, we have a to the fifth times a, which is a to the sixth. And there's nothing else that we can uh, do with this. The b squared doesn't have another b to multiply by. Um, it is multiplying the other uh, factors here, but we can't apply any rule to simplify it. So we just simply uh, write b to the second power. Uh, so if you're comfortable with everything on this slide, then you will be completely comfortable with multiplying uh, bigger polynomials, uh, bigger in terms of the number of terms. Uh, so next we're going to look at multiplying a monomial times any polynomial. And to do that we are now just using the distributive property. So the same rules that we just saw with monomials will apply here, but we might have to multiply uh, several different times depending on how many terms are in the polynomial. So in the first example we have the monomial 5x times the binomial x squared minus 8. So we are going to distribute the 5x to each of the two terms, uh, beginning with 5x times x squared. Uh, so here the coefficient for the x squared is 1, so we end up with 5 as the coefficient in the product, and x times x squared is x to the third. Next we will multiply the 5x times the negative 8. 5 times negative 8 is negative 40, and then the x is there as well. So the x doesn't have another x to uh, multiply, so that we don't need to apply the product rule, but we still are really multiplying it here. That negative 40 is multiplied by x. So the uh, result here is also a binomial 5x to the third minus 40x. In the second example, we have a monomial negative 2xy times a trinomial 4x squared plus 5x minus 10. So once again, we're going to distribute that negative 2xy to each of the three terms of the trinomial. Uh, so notice that since we are multiplying three times, we are going to get three terms in our product. Uh, so here multiplying negative 2xy times 4x squared, we have negative 8x to the third y. Then multiplying negative 2xy times 5x, we have negative 10x squared y. 
And then finally, negative 2xy times negative 10 gives us positive 20xy. Notice that when you have a negative coefficient, it changes all of the signs in the polynomial. All right, so now that we looked at multiplying a monomial times any polynomial, we can now talk about how to multiply any polynomial times any other polynomial. Uh, so in this example, we are going to look at multiplying a binomial times a trinomial, um, but the idea can work no matter what size polynomials you have. So the main idea is to use what we had talked about before. So in the last slide, we were using the distributive property, so we're still going to do that. We're going to distribute all of the terms of the first polynomial to all of the terms of the second polynomial. When we multiply, we will use uh, the product rule whenever possible. So if we have the same base, we're going to add the exponents together. Then we will combine any like terms. All right, so let's take a look at this example where we have a binomial times a trinomial. Now, you might write this in a couple of different ways, but essentially the idea is to take each term of your first polynomial, in this case we have a binomial, so we're going to take this term x, multiply it by all of the terms of the next polynomial, then go to the second term of this binomial, and we'll multiply that by all of the terms of the trinomial. So I wrote that out here in the second line. You could maybe skip that step if you're comfortable just kind of doing this uh, by I, um, but just writing out what we're doing might be helpful because now you're really breaking it down to a monomial times a polynomial. So first we'll distribute the x, so x times 3x squared is 3x to the third, then x times negative x is negative x squared, x times 5 is 5x, and now we're distributing the 4. 4 times 3x squared is 12x squared, 4 times negative x is negative 4x, 4 times 5 is 20. Then if you have like terms, you should combine them so that we can write our polynomial in simplest form. I always like to try and write the terms in order by degree. Um, it helps me just to make sure I haven't missed anything, and it's usually nice to read polynomials when they're uh, in order by degree. Uh, so here the highest degree term is 3, so it's 3x squared. There's nothing to combine that with because there are no other terms that have an x squared. Uh, combining the x, negative x squared and 12x squared is positive 11x squared. Remember when you are combining, you're just adding the coefficients, so negative 1 plus 12 is positive 11, keeping the variable and the exponent the same. Uh, we have 5x plus the negative 4x, which is a positive 1x, and then we just have that constant of 20 that doesn't have anything to combine with. So the product here would be 3x to the third plus 11x squared plus x plus 20. All right, the last thing we're going to do is look at a special case of a binomial times a binomial. Um, and this can be done in the same method that we had uh, seen in the last slide, so just by using the distributive property. Um, but sometimes people like to uh, talk about a little shortcut, not necessarily a shortcut, but maybe a little uh, mnemonic to help them remember uh, how to multiply all of the different terms when you're working with binomials times binomials. But this method is only for two binomials. It does not make sense to think about this method for other size polynomials. Uh, so on the left hand side here you have an example using the distributive property like we had just seen in the last slide. So we have two binomials x plus 3 and x plus 7 and we could take the first term x, distribute it to the x plus 7, then take the second term 3, distribute it to the x plus 7. When we do that we end up with x squared plus 7x plus 3x plus 21 and you can combine the two uh, like terms 7x and 3x to get 10x. Now another way to think about this is to think about the terms in terms of their position. Uh, so we have this mnemonic FOIL, F-O-I-L, um, and those letters actually stand for the position that the term is within the uh, structure of the two binomials. So the F stands for the first, multiplying the first two terms, uh, the first term in each of the binomials, so that would be the x times the x, which gives us x squared. Then multiplying the outer terms, so the ones that are kind of like on the outside, that would be the x times the 7, that gives us 7x. 
Then i is the inner terms, three times x, which is three x. And then l stands for the last two terms, three times seven, which is positive 21. So notice you get the same four terms that we did when we used the other method. And it really doesn't even matter what order your terms are in because you're just gonna combine like terms anyway. And when you have a polynomial, the order of the terms really doesn't matter. Um, but again, you can start to practice putting them in order by degree. So in this case, we still get x squared plus 10x plus 21. So here are some other examples of multiplying binomials um, using the FOIL method. Uh, so in this first example, we have x plus 5 times x minus 3. So first would be the x times x, which is x squared. The outer would be x times negative 3, which is negative 3x. The inner, 5 times x, which is 5x. And last, 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Combining the like terms, we have x squared plus 2x minus 15. In the second example, 3x minus 2 times x plus y. The first terms, 3x times x is 3x squared. The outside terms, 3x times y is 3xy. The inside terms, negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And last, we have negative 2 times y or negative 2y. In this case, we don't have any like terms to combine. So all the terms are different. Remember, like terms have to have the same variables and the same exact exponents. Um, this is actually in order by degree. We have a second degree term, another second degree term, a first degree term, and a first degree term. And when we have two terms with the same degree, we go alphabetically. Uh, so since these first two terms are both uh, degree two, uh, in this case we go by the x's. So the x has a higher exponent here, which makes that term go first. Same thing with the last two terms. They are both first degree terms, but we would write the x term first because it's alphabetically a first. All right, and finally, this is just a summary of just the FOIL method um, with the uh, explanation of what FOIL stands for, F-O-I-L. Um, remember, this is a mnemonic to help you remember how to multiply two binomials. So FOIL is not in itself an operation. It's a way to help you remember to do the operation of multiplication when you have a binomial times a binomial only. Um, so if you were to say, oh, I'm going to FOIL this, it's really incorrect to, to say that. And sometimes I actually call this a, a four-letter F word um, because I think students kind of misinterpret the meaning behind this. It's not anything special, but just a way to help you remember how to multiply polynomials. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and please take a look at the examples in your text.